Praise the Lord. It's a wonderful time for each and every one of us to study the Word of God, to understand what it means to be a child of God in these dark days that we're living in. You know, one important thing we need to remember, Jesus said, I have given unto you my peace. The peace that I give unto you is not as the world gave unto you. My peace I give unto you. Today we see the peace that the world has has been shattered. But the peace that Jesus has given us is a peace which is everlasting. And remember, he made a covenant of peace with us. We have a covenant of peace. He said, I am the Prince of Peace. And when we receive Jesus, Lord of our life, people come into a relationship with God and God's peace come into their lives. They're no more the same. Let's believe the word of God. Let's go to the book of John chapter number 14 and verse number 27. And let's see how it reads and tells us uh, what it really means to us when Jesus said, My peace I leave with you. Uh, John chapter 14 and verse number 27. If you have a Bible there, you can open up. Maybe you can write down the scriptures. It will help you. Because the word of God is very important for us. Okay, let's read that. John chapter 14 and verse 27 says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Yeah, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So the opposite of fear and being afraid is ha not having the peace of God. Let's put our trust in the peace of God. It's not that we are not concerned about the, about the things that the world is going through. We are concerned and we, 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 are, we are compassionate. But still, let it not overload your life that you lose your peace with God. And I believe if you have the peace of God today, you will never fail. You will always be above only and not beneath. And that's how important it is for us to have the peace of God. So put your trust in the Lord and say, Lord, I thank you for the peace of God. I'm not going to be troubled. I'm not going to be moved. I believe that the peace of God keeps me. In fact, the Bible also says, let the peace of God rule your heart. We don't let the fear of the world rule our hearts. We don't make decisions based on how the world is running. When the Bible says, I give unto you my peace, and he differentiates with the peace that the world gives, he means something. He meant something very important. What does it mean? Even in the midst of chaos, even in the midst of what is happening around in the world, you will have the inner peace which cannot be destroyed or taken away. In fact, the kingdom of God is righteousness, mm -hmm. peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And we ought to understand that we have the right standing with God. It's God and, and God has become our Father through the blood relationship that we have with Jesus. Mm -hmm. We have a right standing with God. And the second thing is Jesus, the Prince of Peace, has come into our hearts. Mm -hmm. And thirdly, the Holy Ghost is inside of us. It enables us to rejoice. We, we will stand with those who are going through troubles. We, 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 would, we would pray for those who are going through trouble. But you cannot be overloaded by the peacelessness that is in the world. Put your trust in the Lord God Almighty. And make sure that you don't lose your peace. This ought to be the time that you stand on the word of God and say, Lord, you made a covenant of peace with me. And I stand on the covenant. I stand on the covenant. That's my right. I'm going to be at peace. And that's the only way I can help somebody else out. We'll read another scripture from the book of Romans chapter 16. And verse number 20. When you understand what the peace of God can do in your life. You will never be the same again. You will say, Lord, I have forgotten that I'm a child of God. I have forgotten that I'm supposed to be the comfort for this world. I'm the light of of the world and I'm the salt of the earth and I have healing in my hands. Mm -hmm. I, have, I have the love of God that is shed abroad in my heart that I could go and, and move around the people and let the love of God ooze out of me into their lives and we would comfort them and bring them out of the bondage. Mm -hmm. Let's read the scripture from the book of uh, Romans chapter 16 and verse number 20. 
And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. And the God of peace, our God is a God of peace. Amen. He's always, he's a never change. And the same yesterday, today, and forever. Peace is not lost in heaven. Peace has never been lost in, in the realm of the spirit. Peace is always peace in the realm of the spirit. Because it's impossible for you to lose your peace and live the life of a Christian or a child of God. How can I live a life trying to, to earn my peace by trying to please people, by moving around with people and getting the ideas and the thoughts of the people? And that's going to be when I would come to a place where I, 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 I would lose the peace that I have. And the Bible records very clearly, it says, the peace of God shall bruise Satan, who is Satan, the arch enemy of God and the enemy of the world. He's the God of this world that has blinded the minds of the people and caused them to believe the lies. Whereas we, as children of God, we ought not to forget that the peace of God shall bruise Satan under our feet and we would see everything come under our feet. That's the heart of God. That's what we believe according to the scriptures. In fact, you've got to believe this. His children shall always be at peace. Let's go to the book of Isaiah and chapter 54. Isaiah chapter 54. And it says in the book of uh, 54 and verse number, we'll read verse number 30, 13 onwards. Verse 13 and 14. And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. Great shall be the peace of your children. Great shall be the peace of your children. We are all children of God. And we do have children. Great shall be our peace. We shall be so peaceful in the times of trouble. We are going to be taught of the Lord. And all the children shall be taught of the Lord. If we are having... A, 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 a heart of a child, we would always be wanting to learn. Amen. We don't want to be walking in the, in, in the realm of the world, trying to get our peace from everyone. Oh, I feel peace because he, he or she told me something. I feel good because I heard some good news in, in the news. See, the news that we hear is up and down, up and down. It turns, it changes moment by moment. And most of the time we hear the negative and one positive report and we feel, oh my God, something good has happened. But let's remain in the peace of God. Let's be taught of the Lord. And if we are taught of the Lord, we are going to have great peace. Amen. Great peace. And I'm, I'm, honoring, I'm honoring the word of God. And, I'm, and we ought to, as children of the Most High God, honor his word at this time and say, God, I'm not going to be offended. I'm going to be at peace. In fact, Psalm, another good scripture, in Psalm 119 and verse 163, it says, in Psalm 119, and verse number 165, it says, Great peace have they which love thy law. Oh, great peace. You're not going to be troubled. You're not going to be afraid. You shall have great Amen. peace. Amen. You shall have great peace if you love the word of God. Amen. That's how important the word of God is to you. That's why we keep encouraging you through the words that the Holy Spirit speaks to us and we put it... We put those in, in, in whatever, whatever the Holy Spirit puts into our minds. We put them in writing and we want to help the brothers and sisters. We, it's, it's not because we want to, we, we, we have no other work to do. It's because the Holy Spirit wants us to encourage you with the words of life. That's the reason you, you get message after message after message. Because this is the word that we are standing on. We are living on this word. It's impossible for us to be without the great peace. It's great peace. It's abundance of peace. It's abundance of peace. And if you really believe in that, you will say, Lord, I don't want to, I don't want to lose my peace. The most important thing for us to remember is for us to understand great peace shall be upon them that love the word of God. Do you love the word of God? Who is the word of God? He's not just a written uh, matter, printed matter. He is Jesus himself. Amen. 
Jesus Christ is the word. You've got to love Jesus more than anything around in the world. Amen. Love the word of God. Love the word of God. Every bit of the word you hear, you say, God, I thank you for speaking to me. This is a season that we put the word of God to work in our lives. Amen. The Bible says to speak the word in season and out of season. Amen. So what are we? We are in the right season today. We're in the right season today to see the word of God working on our behalf. And God has not given us a spirit of fear. Amen. Fear is a spirit. Amen. And God doesn't want us to have fear or no. live in fear. No. Fear is not from God. Fear That's is right. a force that is opposite of faith. Exactly. And God says that I have not given you the spirit of fear. Exactly. Hallelujah. And if you don't have peace, you're on the losing end of everything that God has for you. And fear brings torment. All it the brings time. torment. It brings fear brings torment. The Bible very clearly says, right. "Fear brings torment." And the scripture that you read in Isaiah chapter fifty-four, yeah, and verse fourteen, we read verse we read verse thirty, yes. but verse fourteen say, "In righteousness shall thou be established." God wants us to be established in righteousness, yes, right. having a right standing with God, having a right relationship with God. It says, "Thou shalt be far from oppression." Amen. For thou shalt not fear. And from terror for it, it shall not come near thee. Exactly. Amen. What are we afraid about? Things that are going to come near us. But it says if you are established in the right standing that yes. Christ has made available for us. Christ has made available for us a right standing. Yes. You have a right standing with God. You don't have a wrong standing with God. You are not supposed to be living in condemnation. Yes, right. Condemnation is a weak force that attacks you that get up, gets a hold of your mind and makes you feel so miserable. That's right. Take into your heart. You must know that you are established in righteousness. Yes. It tells you that God loves you in Amen. spite Amen. of what you are and what you're going through. Amen. He loves you. And if he loves you, he doesn't love you in word only, but he loves you indeed. Yeah. That's the reason he put Jesus up on the cross and he said, by his stripes, you are Amen. healed. Amen. And I'm going to be healed someday. you got to believe faith is now. Hope is in the future. So if you want the hope to come into your uh, current position or, or, or what you're going through now, you got to make sure let faith arise. Amen. And draw what is in the future and bring it to your present time. Amen. This morning when I was reading in uh, Revelation, Revelation chapter 1 verse 17, it says, Fear not. I am the first and the last. Amen. And verse 18 says, I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Amen. 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 That gives a volume. That tells us a volume of what Jesus has conquered. He has conquered the grave. He has conquered death. He's alive. He's, he's alive. He's alive. He's not dead. He's alive. He's alive. He destroyed the one who had the power of death that was causing us to live in fear all our lifetime. But Jesus conquered death. He destroyed the one who had the power of death. Amen. Let's encourage ourselves today and say, God, I'm going to be at peace. I'm not going to lose my peace. Yes. We lose our peace by hearing the wrong reports. Yes. Now, we don't deny the facts. We don't deny the facts. Faith does not deny the facts. When Jesus said in, 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 uh, in the book of, uh, let's turn to that book, in fact, we should go to the John chapter 16 and verse number 33. Now, we don't deny what's happening around. We're not blinded to what's happening around. We're not, we're not numb to the things that are happening around. People are suffering. People are aching. People are losing lives. God knows that. And we, his children, we know that. Yes. But God still has a way for every one of us. He always has a way in the whirlwind. In the book of Nahum, 1 and verse 3 says, I have my way even in the whirlwind. When things are going bad to us, I still have my way. Amen. Things are going from bad to worse, but thank God for his goodness. Let's see what Jesus says in the book of John chapter 16 and verse number 33. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. These things, whatever he has spoken, in scripture, right from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation, Jesus, he is. He is Jehovah Shammah, the Lord who is present. He is. Whatever he has spoken from the book of Genesis 
and we ought to understand that he's talking to us. Every comforting word that came from the mouth of God is peace for us. Yes. These things I have spoken unto you. These things I have spoken unto you. Not the few things that he spoke amongst the disciples only. Every word that has proceeded out of the mouth of God I have spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In me you might have peace. Amen. In me you might have peace. In me you might have Amen. peace. Amen. These things I have spoken unto you in me, not in the world, yes. not in the news reports, not in whatever we hear, what everybody says, not by what people say, yes. but in him we have peace. Take courage today. In him we have peace. These things I have spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the next verse, and, and the next part of the verse. In the world you shall have tribulation. In the world you shall have tribulation. Are you in the world or are you in Christ? If you are in the world, then you've got to be troubled like the world. Then you will only have the peace yes. of the world, which is going to be shattered every time the enemy pulls the trigger. Every time you would have, you will have difficulty in understanding. Oh my God. Why have you let this happen? God does not let anything happen. It's we who let things happen in our lives. God is a good God. He's a loving Savior. He has already spoken to us even before things have happened. He says, look up to me. When you see these things happening, look up to me because your day of redemption is drawing near. Look up to him. So in the world you shall have tribulation. There is a lot of tribulation in the world. There's plenty of tribulation in the world. There's a lot of trouble. Time and time again we find things happening and it, it is, it's not God's will that any should perish. It has always been the heart of God. It's not His will that any should perish. Yes. It is His will that all come to repentance, to change their way of thinking yes. and turn to the living God. Yes. Turn from all forms of belief that have kept them bound and come to the living Savior who can honor them and bring them to a position where they will come out of slavery and they will be children of the Most High God. And the next part of the verse. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Be of good cheer. Be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. That's encouraging. That's encouraging. That's promising. That's really giving us an assurance. Be courageous. Be cheerful. Be courageous. Be cheerful. I have overcome Amen. the world. If Jesus overcame the world, he didn't perform something. He did something for all mankind. He said, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. He died for all. He just didn't die for a few people. He died for all. And if we can believe in him, we can be saved and delivered and healed. Let's look up to the Lord and say, God, we trust in you. We trust in you. We are taking courage in you, Lord. We are taking courage in you. We believe that all things are possible to them that believe. Jesus looked at the people always and said, when people came to him, and when they wanted healing, he said, do you believe? Can you believe? He said, yes, Lord, we believe. We, are, we believe. What do we believe? That Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Yes. We believe that Jesus Christ is our living Savior. We believe that Jesus Christ is the Lord. We believe that God raised Jesus Christ from yes. the dead. We believe that the shedding of the blood of Jesus Christ brings remission Amen. to our sins. Amen. It's by the blood of Jesus Christ that we have faith in the blood of Jesus Christ Amen. that makes us righteous in His sight. Amen. Thank God for the peace of God that has come into our lives. You can be courageous and bold. Finally, one more scripture we're gonna read and we're gonna pray with you. We're gonna pray for you, whoever who you are, wherever you are. We're gonna see the book of Isaiah chapter 26 and verse number three. Isaiah chapter 26 and verse number three. It says, once again, it tells us that the peace of God is our refuge. The peace of God is our strength. Thou will keep him in perfect peace. Thou will keep him in perfect peace. Who says this? God says, I will keep you in perfect peace. Now, prophet Isaiah is prophesying 
And he's saying, Lord, you will keep your people in perfect peace. And it's conditional. It's conditional. And the conditions are not difficult. It's, it's not difficult. But it says, whose mind is stayed on thee. If our mind is stayed on him, if our mind is stayed on him, we can always have the peace of God. Yes. It says, thou shalt give them perfect peace. Or in other words, it says, peace upon peace. Or an abundance of peace. Abundance of peace. Abundance of peace. You can trust him today. Yes. Your mind needs to be focused on him. Keep your mind focused on him. Keep your mind focused on him. And say, Lord, I trust in you. I believe in you. I believe in you. This is this is the kind of word that is used here. It, it says to keep your mind stayed on you. It's the kind of thing, you know, we go down to the beach and to some kind of a, 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 a place where, there, where, the, where, the, where the soil or the sand is very, very smooth and we just place our foot on that sand and our foot goes right in. That's the kind of thing, to put our mind into his word. Put our mind in him. And we shall have peace upon peace upon peace. And our peace is going to be overflowing in our lives. Amen. And the peace of God shall blow Satan under your Amen. feet. Amen. Your feet. Have something else to share with that? No, when bad news came to Jairus. Yes. And as he was uh, going into Jairus, I saw Jesus and Jairus, they were walking. And immediately Jesus turned around Jairus and said, Fear not, mm. only believe. Only believe. So God wants us to... Not fear and have faith and just believe. Exactly. His good word and his good report. Yeah, yeah. In absence of peace. Of yeah, absence of peace is troubled faith. I would say it like that. Absence of peace is troubled faith or contaminated faith. We don't want to contaminate our faith because it's a faith that enables us to overcome the world. Yes. It's our faith that enables us to overcome the world. So when there is no peace, we lose out. Yes. So let's pray. Yes. We're going to pray for you. We're going to pray for your loved ones. And if you believe that Jesus is Lord, you can declare with your mouth and say, I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. Yes. I receive you into my life. I ask you to come into my life and fill my life with your love and your favor. Fill me with your spirit yes. that I might be a child of God. And you can be a child of God in a moment of a time where you will say, I repent. I change my way of thinking. I turn around. I, I, I turn around. If I don't change my mind, I cannot change my acts. I can try to move immediately and say, okay, I'm going to change my, 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 my acts. But if your mind is not reversed, if your mind is not changed, you're going to do the same thing again. Yes. So change. When you start changing your mind, you start seeing your acts are going to come in line. Yes. Let's pray. Okay, you pray. Father God, we come to you in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, for all those viewers. And we also pray, Father, right now, Father, all those who are aching and paining and they are in pain and they are going through some kind of a difficulty. I pray right now, Father, that Lord, those who are tormented by fear, in Jesus' name, and I pray, Father, that your word will saturate their minds. And I pray, Father, even as we spoke your word, Father, we saw in your word that fear is not from you, Father. Right now, I take authority of that spirit of fear and I rebuke that spirit of fear out of their minds, yes. Father. I thank you, Father, Lord. Even as you said, Father, the greater one dwells in us than he that is in the world, Father. I pray that you will help them to overcome, Lord, these troubled times, Lord, evil times, Father, Lord. We thank you, Father, Lord. We believe that you are the God who is our refuge, God who speaks, Lord, at all times, Lord, and who comforts us, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for restoring you. peace unto them, Father, Lord. Thank they you, look Jesus. up to you, the God of peace, Lord. The God of peace who gives them peace at this Thank time, you, Father. Jesus. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Lord, in Jesus' Thank name. You, Father, we pray yes. in Jesus' name and we break the controlling authority yes. over the minds of the people. Yes. That is that thing called fear. Go out. Yes. Be destroyed. Yes. Go off on the minds yes. of your Jesus people. Name. And let there be great peace yes. that will flood their souls. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. 
and see you sometime again. Bye.